Today I will show you how to integrate with an API. It will be a REST API and we will be using this uh, small but powerful library called React Query. React Query is a library that provides a cache layer for a smart cache layer for your React application. So whenever you are doing a request, it is smart enough to fetch the data and then uh, store it in a cache. At specific moments, it will refetch behind the scenes without you knowing about that. So it greatly improves the development experience and it reduces uh, the code needed to perform requests from your React application. So we will see how to uh, do that today. And for the API, we will be using Dev2 API. So Dev2 is this community of uh, programmers, people who either learn or teach programming and they write articles about that. So they provide this API where you can fetch articles and we will be using specifically that. As always, we will be writing everything in TypeScript and for setup, I will be using a tool called Next.js, which is probably the easiest way to set up a React.js application uh, these days. So let's get going. Okay, so we will be integrating with uh, API, with Dev2 API. Dev2 is this community of uh, amazing developers. Anyone can write an article and they provide an API so that you can fetch those articles and much more. So this is the result. We are using Tailwind CSS and we are fetching the current top articles. So let's see how we can build that. First of all, we need to generate an application. So I will be using PNPM again. So if you don't know the tool, I recommend you check it out. It's like NPM or, or Yarn. There are a few differences, but probably the most important one is that it installs each dependency once on your computer, which means that the, the dependency is stored once on, on your computer and then reused in each project automatically. So it reduces the space occupied by those dependencies uh, largely. We need to use create uh, next app as our template and let's call this app create react query dev2 maybe next.js so there is this uh, a bummer because this create next app automatically uses yarn which we don't want so we can just stop this process and we can enter react query dev2 so let's remove those node modules well, actually, it didn't generate it anything. So I think we need to install it using Yarn. I think they are trying to do too much here. Let's repeat that. Okay, so we have that. And let's get to our app. And I will remove node modules because I don't want them to be stored like that. And the Yarn lock. And now I'll just use PNPM to get those dependencies. But because I'm already, you know, generated several similar projects, I'm just reusing, as you can see, almost all of the dependencies I've stored on my disk. Okay, so we have that. Now we can open it in VS Code. And because we want to use TypeScript and Next.js, we need to do a touch TS config, an empty file, once next JS starts, it will populate it with proper values for this uh, framework. And then we need to add a few dependencies. So we need to add TypeScript as a development dependency and types for React and types for Node, like so. Okay, and because we want to use Tailwind, we need to add Tailwind. And we need post CSS and post CSS flex back fixes. Okay, once we have that, let's initialize our Tailwind configuration. So we will use Tailwind init. And this will create Tailwind config. And let's touch post CSS because Tailwind is a plugin for post CSS. It's kind of complicated, but you're doing it only once, so it doesn't really matter. 
And once we have that, we can populate the post CSS specifying our plugins. So we want Tailwind and post CSS Flexbox and preset env. So once we have that, we can go to uh, styles, we can remove home because we don't need that and global as well. And here we will be using just three lines of Tailwind, base components and utilities. So now if we start our next JS application using PNP, uh, PNPM dev, it should generate PS config. And we will probably get some errors, but let's see. It will take a while because Tailwind compilation is pretty slow. Okay, we have that. So we have an error because we removed this pre-generated style. So let's get rid of that and let's remove this whole content inside this div and let's open it up. So it works. We have the message. Let's see if Tailwind is working. So for example, red 500, it works. So now let's design our the structure of our application. Let's just take care of that. And here we will say max with, let's say 5XL, margins auto, and maybe some margin on top. Let's uh, put it side by side. And here, let's say background gray 100. It will take a while. Okay, so we have that. Let's make it 100%. So now it'd be nice to build a list for our articles. So I will use another component for that. So I will say that components and maybe let's call it article collection. And this will be taking a collection. For now, let's just say article one, article two, and let's import that in our main file like that. And it works. We have the those two articles. So now let's integrate with React Query. So first we need to install it. So we will do pnpm add and we will add react query along with a react query dev tools. Okay, so now we need to set this up. So we need several pieces. So we will be getting a few things from react query. So the first thing will be the react query cache provider. The second thing would be the uh, query cache and the last they will use query hook. So the React query cache provider, we need to wrap our entire application with. Let's just put that. So this is the point from which we are entering the cache into our structure. Then we need to create the cache. So let's create that. And once we have that, let's pass this to the provider. So the provider will be injecting this cache through the, the component tree. Query cache, query cache, like that. So now we have it set it up and we need to perform a query. So we'll be performing the query in the home. But first let's define the query. So let's go back and see our API. So this API provides several routes. We are interested only in those routes that are not authenticated. So one of them is articles. So if we perform query to this API, we are getting the articles. So this is our URL. And we can just write a simple function and let's call it fetcher. And this function will be using the fetch API and then we'll be transforming the result to JSON. So let's write this to JSON. Response. Uh, 
like that. And we need to use TypeScript here. Okay. So this is a very simple invocation. And now we need to pass this invocation to the use query hook. So use query hook returns some data and some other additional information. So the first parameter is the name of our query. So let's call it article articles maybe. And the second is the function we want to invoke, which is the fetcher. And here we made a little error. So it needs to be a function. And this hook returns the data that is being fetched through the fetch API and also the state if it's loading an error if there is there are errors. So now we can decide if it's loading, we can just return the loading message. If it's error, we can return the error error. Otherwise, we will return data. So we can just rename it to articles. And we can pass it as a collection here. So we are passing the data once it's not loading and there is no error. This piece of code is being executed. So now we are executing this query, but we are not really seeing if anything happens. And this is where React Query DevTools come into play. React Query DevTools we can get. And now we can add this here. There must be a single entry. And once I add this, there is this little icon being displayed and I can click on that. And I have, the, I have this dev tool and panel where I can see all my uh, requests that are being made with all the uh, status data. So we see that this query to the API was actually executed behind the scenes. And this is the data we are getting. So we are getting those articles and we can inspect the data, see all the parameters, the structure. We can see, you know, if you have more requests, and what's interesting is that when I, you know, re refocus the window, as you can see, it's being re-executed. So React Query re-executes the queries at specific moments. So it's convenient. So for example, switching window is a good moment to refetch the data. And we can manually refetch as well. So it's very handy. We can this way inspect the data. So we now know that we have the data. The query was properly executed and is being executed in the background. And it's the data we wanted. And we are passing this data to this component. So now we can go here and we can, for example, say that we will display it. So in this panel, we've seen that we have the, the title. So let's use that. And we are getting this, those articles. So now the final step would be to make it a little bit uh, maybe more pretty using Tilewind. So let's see. So we would like to have boxes which are white with shadow maybe and rounded. Inside we will have a list. Let's say divided by those horizontal lines and we will have LE. So this will go here and this will go here. And this we don't need. Uh, so we have like a basic structure. And now we will maybe have links so that we can open those. So this will be block. On hover, we will do background 100. And inside, maybe some padding. So let's display it. Okay. It looks much better now. Maybe this could be slightly bigger or even more so that we could put the tags here because if we inspect the data we should have a tags somewhere here yeah the tag list so let's display that on right on the right side so here we would need a flex and uh, justify between items centered title should be bigger and maybe blue like that. And then we could have the tags on right. So let's see inline. So let's say text small 
rounded full, background uh, gray 200 and text gray 700 is working out, but we need um, padding. Okay, so that would be that this will be a list. So article tag list map tag. Uh, inline flex maybe let's say one okay and tag so it's not perfect let's maybe make it bigger yeah kind of it's kind of kind of okay so finally we could improve it using TypeScript. So for example, we could define the shape of our data. So I could say that because I'm using title here and tag list, I could define an interface for that. So I could say, and it's title string and tag list string array. So now I could say, communicate that to use query and say that the result is article list and the second one is error. So this error disappears and we are passing. The articles are now properly typed and here is it's any so we could say from index like that. So article is typed and that's pretty much it. So very simple integration using React Query. I hope you liked it and I hope you learned something new. That's all for today. See you in the next one.